past have been quite critical about adult animation. I've made it very clear that for every adult series I like, such as South Park or Drawn Together, there's one out there like Brickleberry or Modern Family Guy that doesn't understand what adults really want. All it is is shock and disturbing, shock and disturbing without any actual substance. These are my biggest pet peeve shows. I hate these. No effort, no creativity, no anything at all. Now, if you will, imagine one of those shows, but attached to a beloved children's show IP. Ren and Stimpy. Ren and Stimpy was one of the original three Nicktoons, alongside Dog and Rugrats. And it was known for being a little insane, to say the least. Created by John Chris Felusi, Ren and Stimpy quickly became notorious for its insane gross-out jokes, its nonsensical animation, and being wonderfully disturbing. And yeah. It's a really good show, although the production history behind this would make a show in and of itself. Seriously, somebody make like a Netflix miniseries out of how this show got made, it's crazy. To sum it up, John Kay was an extreme perfectionist. If you did anything he didn't like, the whole thing got scrapped and you had to do it all over again. This includes his rule of never draw the same face twice. What does this mean? Did you not listen to the rule? It's exactly what it sounds like. You can never ever draw Ren and Stimpy with the same face twice, otherwise he'll throw it out. This perfectionism is good sometimes. It means that you care about your quality of work. It means that you want a good product. However, this is not good when you have deadlines to meet. In the business world, you cannot turn in your project whenever, even in show business, because show business is still business. So many times, John K missed his deadline entirely causing Nickelodeon to go into a frenzy. They didn't have the episode they were supposed to air, what could they do? After about two seasons of this, plus John K getting increasingly raunchy with episodes like Man's Best Friend, Nickelodeon decided, maybe it's best that we part ways. So John K was kicked off his own show, and he was replaced by Games Animation, and the voice of Ren was now provided by the voice of Stimpy, Billy West. People seem to be very divided on these seasons. Some say that they're not quite as good as the original, but still pretty good. Some say they're pale imitations, and there are a select few out there that say that they're better. Me? It really depends on the episode. Some of them, like Doubleheader, are really enjoyable, while others, like, say, Hard Times for Haggis, are not. To be fair, the original seasons were like this too. Not every season was entirely perfect, each one had at least one blemish, but the blemishes were never really too, too bad. But even after Ren and Stimpy got canned, it still proved to be very popular. Popular enough for the new TNN, now relabeled Spike TV, to reach out to John Kay and say, we would like a new Ren and Stimpy show. But not just any Ren and Stimpy show. A Ren and Stimpy show for the people that grew up with the original. Considering that now it's 2003 and the original was cancelled in the mid-90s, all the fans are grown up now. So let's give them a show for their age group. An adult age group. Specifically targeted at males 18 to 36. And John Kay said, Yeah, I want to do Ren and Stimpy again. Sign me up! Honestly, who would balk at such a suggestion like that? This guy clearly cared about his product. He loved Ren and Stimpy. I mean, obviously, if he was going to hold it back the way he did because he wanted it to be just right, he obviously cares at least a little. And as he says in one of the previews, if he was going to do Ren and Stimpy for the rest of his life, he'd be happy. Unfortunately, that didn't really turn out so well because this show only lasted six last seven episodes. I'll talk about that in a minute. So, what happened? What made Ren and Stimpy adult party cartoon fail so badly? Well... There's a lot of reasons, and not all of them have to do with John Kay's strange personality or, now that we know, sexual desires. But yes, those pedophilic allegations actually do factor into this show, and not in the way that you think. I'll save that to the end though, because that's one of the biggest bombshells. But anyways, let's take a look at just how Ren and Stimpy, 
adult party cartoon is fundamentally broken. First off, I want to say that this thing was advertised really, really well. All of Spike TV's original programming had a lot of marketing going into them, but this one seemed to be the one they'd pushed the heaviest. Why not? It's attached to an already established property. People know what Ren and Stimpy is, people have watched Ren and Stimpy, and given the fact that it's from the same people, they're gonna watch it. One of my favorite previews is this one, where it shows Ren and Stimpy on a bus. It's nice, it gets you reinvested, it shows you that the characters have returned in a new adult series, and the best part, it doesn't show any of the actual series. You see, that's actually clever because if they did show you any of the series, people would raise an eyebrow and go, this isn't right, this isn't what I want to see. And sure enough, that's what happened when this show came out. Very quickly, people realized this is not the original Ren and Stimpy, in more ways than the content. The content is more adult, but the rest of the show still doesn't feel like Ren and Stimpy. One of the things that made Ren and Stimpy work so well was getting crap past the radar. So many things that they put into their episodes would absolutely not fly in any other children's show. Somehow, Ren and Stimpy was able to pull it off, and that was the fun of it. It was a quote-unquote kid-friendly show that really was anything but. When you take that edge away, you have something that's for adults, in name only. It's almost the inverse of the Ren and Stimpy show. Only in this case, instead of being a kid's show that wasn't really for kids, this time it's an adult show that's super immature in all forms of humor. What's the most stereotypical adult joke you can think of? Does it have to do with poop? Boobs? Butt cracks? Anything? Well, it's in here! And let me tell you, I use jokes incredibly loosely. There are almost no gags in this entire show. All it is is, look, poop, look, scantily clad women, and that's the joke. And again, joke, using massive air quotes here. I have said this time and time again. Simply having a shocking substance or simply having an adult reference is not a joke. You can't say the word penis and expect that in and of itself to be a joke. It needs to have something built around it. For example, look at the episode of Drawn Together, Captain Girl. Here they use penis as a joke, but they actually have substance around it. See, Captain Hero gets a letter, in the form of a Mad Lib, from a villain aptly named the Mad Libber. When you fill this out, it's supposed to tell you his plan and what he's done to certain people. Rather than actually fill it out correctly, the cast decides to write penis in all the blanks. And then they all burst out laughing because it makes no sense, but then Captain Hero remembers that his sidekick is dead and then bursts out crying. This is a joke. This has a setup and a punchline. Simply having Ren and Stimpy eat boogers or grab giant logs of crap from the fire chief's toilet is not a joke. They don't do anything with it. All it's there to do is really make you shocked and disturbed. That's it. Not laugh, just feel off-put. But the thing is, it can't even do that. I've talked about this too. It's called shock fatigue. Let's go back to the SpongeBob episode, Ghost Host. Yes, I've used this analogy before, but I'm gonna do it again. In this episode, the Flying Dutchman moves in with SpongeBob, right? And he decides to scare SpongeBob every waking moment of his life. Well, SpongeBob gets tired of this because it's the same thing over and over again. That's the same thing with gross out material. If all you have is gross out with no joke, and all you have is sex material with no joke, it's gonna get boring, it's gonna get tiring, and this show especially doesn't have longevity because of its length. Ren and Stimpy was always 11 minutes for a reason. It works best in 11 minute intervals. John K works best in 11 minute intervals. This gets stretched out to, I don't even know, sometimes it's 22 minutes, sometimes it's 28 minutes, sometimes it's 40 minutes. These things drag, and not in the way that you think. It's not that they have to put in so much that the episodes get longer. No, clearly John K doesn't have enough content to fill these episodes. So what he does is drag jokes out, or drag the scenes out making them last forever. And it's extremely boring to watch. Look at the frog and Ren seeks help when he crawls across the screen. That goes on forever. 
or almost all the jokes in Altruist. They don't end. I know that a lot of people talk about the horribly disturbing material here, but why not talk about the filler? That makes it more insufferable. That's what makes this show so hard to watch. I could so easily chop all of these up and make them 11 minute episodes, cutting out huge scenes, maybe even entire scenes, and you wouldn't miss anything. That's how little stuff actually happens in this. And then again, you wouldn't be missing any jokes either, because again, simply having sex or farts are not jokes. You need to have something around them. But it's only gonna do me so good to talk about the show itself. I need to talk about each and every one of these episodes individually to fully understand what exactly makes this show flop. So bear with me folks, let's do it! First off, I'm going to start off with the honorary episode, Man's Best Friend. This is considered episode zero of the show, technically meaning that this has seven episodes. See, in season two, there was this episode called Ren's Toothache that was going to have Man's Best Friend go with it. However, Man's Best Friend was unable to air, so Big House Blues was put in its place. What made Man's Best Friend so extreme? Well, there's a scene where Ren beats a guy with an oar, there's a bunch of crap references and tobacco references, and don't worry, there's actually jokes behind them. Not references, actual jokes. So Nickelodeon felt that this was not safe for kids, and they decided to air this first on Ren and Stimpy Adult Party Cartoon. First of all, before I talk about the episode itself, I want to say that is an actually genius marketing strategy. Why? Well, people didn't like Adult Party Cartoon. That's no mystery. So starting off with this was actually a good idea because those who were tuning in for the very first time would believe that the show would be like this episode, right? Even though word about this episode had spread already, and they'd probably know that this was made in the original lineup, they'd believe, well, if this is airing alongside Adult Party Cartoon, this must share its style. Spoiler alert, it doesn't, but we'll talk about that very shortly. So, Man's Best Friend. A lot of people are mixed on this one. Some say it was too violent, some say it was great. I say it was good. Not great, but good. Honestly, I do wish Adult Party Cartoon was like this. Rather than simply having adult stuff, it has substance behind that. I've said that already, but I want to emphasize it. This is how it should have been done. See, the treats being cigars is not a joke because they look like cigars. The joke is also how they react to getting them. Or Stimpy crapping on the floor. That itself is not the joke, but the newspaper headline is, and how it references what Stimpy just did. There's very little of this in Adult Party Cartoon, and even when they do have it, it drags. And at least this is 11 minutes. It has a good flow, it doesn't drag, it's funny, good start. However, this doesn't really count as an episode of the series, which is unfortunate so I can't really add points in Adult Party Cartoon's favor. But now let's move on to the very first episode, somewhat. You see, before I start off, I want to say these episodes were aired out of order. According to the production numbers, the actual order for the episodes are Naked Beach Frenzy, Stimpy's Pregnant, Altruist, Fire Dogs 2, Ren Seeks Help, then Onward and Upward. So I guess we're going to be starting off with the actual last episode of Ren and Stimpy Adult Party Cartoon, Onward and Upward. This one had an interesting development. See, in the original Nickelodeon days, John K. kept getting letter after letter after letter begging him, pleading with him, to make an episode devoted entirely to gross-out jokes. They wanted to be disgusted. They wanted to be utterly disturbed. John Kay was more than willing to do this. Nickelodeon, on the other hand, was not. They felt that John Kay was not able to do it in a kid-friendly way, so they told him not to do an episode like this. Well, John saw his chance now that Ren and Stimpy was back, and he made Onward and Upward. If you're ever up one night, and you really can't sleep, and you don't want to take any NyQuil to help you, turn this one on. You'll be out like a light. It is utterly boring. I get it. It's supposed to be disgusting. I don't find it disgusting because the shock fatigue kicks in so quickly. This only has gross out jokes, exactly as it's described. But again, these aren't really jokes. All it is, is Ren and Stimpy eating boogers, snot, and vomit. And that's it. They don't do anything with it, it's just them eating the stuff. 
I don't get it. How is it funny? I mean, it's not even really gross. It's more mildly uncomfortable, if that. But you get used to it, again. They don't shake it up. They don't make it varied. It's only them eating bodily fluids. You see, the story is Ren and Stimpy are poor people living in a homeless man's mouth. After ages and ages of doing nothing, they decide to move out and move into a spittoon in a CD bar, where they eat bodily fluids a bunch, then they have gay sex, and then they get chased out and go back to the homeless man's mouth. I have skipped nothing important, except maybe a Dr. Stupid segment. Even then, it was kind of lifeless. This whole thing drags constantly. It's like... They were filling for time, so they decide. Okay, I'm gonna cut that joke short. You get what I'm trying to say. For an example of how badly this thing has pacing issues, take a look at this scene where Ren and Stimpy are in the homeless man's mouth, and Ren's butt gets attacked by the uvula. That took forever to get across, and there are so many gags like that. And the stuff in the spittoon drags just as much. Again. They eat snot, they eat vomit, and that's it. Nothing else. I don't really know how people would find this funny. It's them eating the stuff, and they don't really acknowledge that it's disgusting. Funny joke? I don't get it. I found this one almost impossible to watch. Every time I try, I keep falling asleep. It's dull, it's lifeless. It doesn't try. There are no... Sometimes they do try to set up a joke, but it fails because it drags forever. There is a scene, for example, where Stimpy wants a kiss from Ren. So Ren grabs a rat and has Stimpy kiss its butthole. This would maybe be a decent joke if Ren and Stimpy original did this. However, this takes upwards of 30 seconds to accomplish because Ren keeps yammering, he goes super slow, he has to gesture to the camera pointing out exactly what he's doing while describing it in detail, and then he lingers while doing it, and then Stimpy lingers with his reaction. It goes on forever, and it's not funny. You know why? You see the punchline coming. This is the case with every joke in here. Because they never vary it up, and because everything goes so slowly, you can tell exactly where it's going. There's no variation, there's no subversion. You always know exactly the joke. You know exactly the punchline. Part of comedy is surprise. If it can't surprise you, the joke is already crippled, at a disadvantage. It won't have as much of a punch. And that's exactly the problem with Onward and Upward. All the jokes linger. All the jokes are the same. Therefore, you can tell where they're going, without fail, every time. It's the equivalent of watching Wheel of Fortune and you figure out the answer to the puzzle long before the contestants, so you're just sitting there, screaming the answer over and over again, and then finally, they get it. But then it happens again, and again, and again, and it doesn't stop. That's onward and upward. It's a great sleeping pill, but it's not great at really anything else. Now, we're gonna get on to the infamous one. The one that Mr. Enter and Phantom Strider have called one of the worst, if not the worst cartoon episode of all time. Ren Seeks Help. What do I think of this utterly panned, horrifying, demented, disturbing thing? Three words. Cool your jets. I would like to say that before Mr. Enter and Phantom Strider and a whole bunch of other bandwagoners started talking about this one, this was considered the best episode of Ren and Stimpy Adult Party Cartoon. And I agree with that. This is the least bad. It's not good. I would at best give it a 5 out of 10. But these guys who've reviewed it, I'm not sure they've seen the other 5 episodes. This is not the worst. Not at all. I can understand how someone would be disturbed by this, especially in comparison to the original Ren and Stimpy show. But to call this one the worst of the lot? No. No, that, that, no, no! Ren and Stimpy get in a fight of some kind, although we now know what that's about, more on that later. Stimpy has finally had it with Ren. He can't take it anymore. The constant abuse, the constant neglect, the constant everything Ren does. So, Ren actually feels bad for once, and he decides in his own words to seek help. 
So after a long, long, long sequence of him walking with no real variation, he stumbles across fan favorite character, Mr. Horse, now Dr. Mr. Horse. He proceeds to tell Mr. Horse about his childhood where he'd abuse small animals, and then he moved on to the frog, and he'd torture this frog, constantly. And then, when he was finally gonna finish the frog off, he realized the frog wanted to die and then decided, no, it's not a good idea to kill the frog because that would make him happy. Time to prolong his suffering. The frog keeps insisting, demanding that Ren puts him down, but he refuses. Eventually, his parents find out about this and force Ren to kill him. However, while they're busy making out, Ren decides to throw the frog in the trash can. Eventually, Dr. Mr. Horse snaps and decides to go crazy on Ren, revealing that he wasn't actually a psychologist, I guess. Ren goes insane, beats Mr. Horse to death, and gets hauled off to a funny farm. Then the frog comes in, tries to kill himself, but it turns out the gun he was gonna use was actually a bang gun, and then there's a weird Looney Tunes-esque title card. Now, can you tell what's good about this episode, or at least, in comparison to the rest? Take a look at that summary compared to Onward and Upward. That took about a minute, right? Meanwhile, Onward and Upward took about 15 seconds. The reason this is the best one is that things happen. It only drags once or twice, so it's not really boring. It's a little off-putting and a little disturbing, especially with all the animal abuse and the grotesque animation, specifically when the frog is getting his guts taken out with Ren's tricycle. But stuff happens. There's actually content to warrant its length. If this was cut down to 11 minutes, I'd say that we'd be missing out on stuff. This story needed to be this long. It's not perfect. Again, there are some points that linger, not much of it's really that funny, the animal abuse gets a bit grating, and the audio mixing is terrible, especially with all of Stimpy's yelling and screaming drowning Ren out a lot of the time, or this inexcusable animation error right here. But for the most part, Ren Seek's help is actually somewhat solid. Again, it's not really funny, especially because all the jokes are really the same thing. Ren is a cruel person. However, unlike Onward and Upward and many of the other episodes we'll be talking about today, these can be considered jokes, because they do have a setup, they do have a punchline, and it's not, look, Ren is burning something alive. There's actually something to go with it. For example, Ren is talking about doing these horrible things to the frog like sticking fireworks up its butthole in a way that would be an old man reminiscing about getting his very first bike or hanging out with his friends at the swimming hole. Something sweet and kind reflecting on his memories of childhood while he's doing these awful, terrible things. I personally don't find it funny, but at least I find it interesting sometimes, even if it does get a bit monotonous. Yeah, it's disturbing, but this whole show is disturbing. And honestly, if we're talking about some of the stuff we'll be getting later, this is some of the lesser disturbing stuff. Really? I think the most disturbing parts are either Ren's birth or that title card. Look at that. But even then, the title card at least looks pretty cool. So yeah, Ren Seek's help is... Eh. It's not good. At all. But it's far, 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 far from the worst episode of Ren and Stimpy adult party cartoon. I'm kinda glad that the bandwagon is dying out right now. We need to calm down, take a breath, and be thankful for what we have. It could be Fire Dogs too. This one I want to like so badly. This should have been great. Ralph Bakshi is here, and he does an amazing job. He's the best actor of this entire thing. Ralph Bakshi himself is already a live action cartoon. He's big, he's loud, he has a funny sounding voice. And everything he does in real life is something like out of a sitcom. In fact, John Kay, in the interview for this episode, which is on the DVD, says that this episode is a documentary on his life. What does that mean? Well, for those who don't know, John Kay was actually Bakshi's protege in the day. Everything he learned, he learned from Ralph. Does that all make sense now? Everything's all coming together. Even though the interview goes on a tangent about how wonderful the new Adventures of Mighty Mouse was, it's a really good watch and I recommend you give it a shot. Basically, John says that every single thing that the fire chief does here was taken by something that Ralph did in real life. So, it's basically if somebody got a whole bunch of in-jokes and animated it. And that's exactly how Fire Dogs 2 feels. 
it takes off right from where Fire Dogs 1 ends, and all of a sudden, the Fire Chief transforms into Ralph Bakshi. And then the rest of the episode is him derping around with Ren and Stimpy with no real aim. It almost feels like a bunch of vignettes stapled together to form an episode. That's not bad. It doesn't have to have a story structure, I guess. A lot of Ren and Stimpy stuff has that. It's not like Onward and Upward where they try to have a story, but it doesn't actually have one. This one seems to embrace its feel. This one understands what it is. But it still drags. A lot. There's a lot of nothing in here, especially the scenes in the bathroom. They drag and go on and on and on. One of the biggest examples I can think of is when they see the fire chief's apartment for the very first time. This scene doesn't end. It goes on for eternity and you feel every second. And it's the same thing. It's messy, it's sloppy. You wouldn't want to live here. There's pictures of naked women on the walls. Haha, -ha. funny joke. That goes on for about two minutes. Yay. But what was I saying about animated in joke? Well, every time the fire chief says something, Ralph does a great job playing himself. After all, Ralph Bakshi playing Ralph Bakshi, that's a very difficult thing, right? In all seriousness, though, you can definitely tell these are in-jokes. An in-joke that we're not a part of. Even though what Ralph does can be a bit amusing, you feel like you're missing something, especially when you know the backstory. See, if I started quoting or reenacting things that my psycho ex-roommate did, then that'd be maybe mildly amusing, but you'd be a little confused. Only when I explained that he did things like try to stop women or masturbate in front of one of my friend's faces, then you'd understand the joke. However, this really feels like we're being excluded from the episode. We weren't there, and this is clearly a you-had-to-be-there situation. If you don't take that into account, it's just some big fat guy derping around. Now, how are Ren and Stimpy in the episode? Well, they don't really do anything. This is the Ralph Bakshi show featuring Eddie and Tommy. Those are the names he gives Ren and Stimpy, by the way. That's really it. They have that infamous flute dance, they have a couple lines here and there, and they actually do have one gag that makes me laugh. Pals like to punch each other, right? <laughs> Go ahead, Eddie. Give it your best shot. There's that, but really, that's pretty much it. They also contribute a lot to the dragon. They're the ones that take forever to look around the apartment, they're the ones that take forever to smoke a cigarette, that kind of stuff. These guys don't help the issue. But Ralph does such a good job here, and I want to like it because he's clearly giving it his all. Every single ounce of effort he is putting into this performance. But I can't recommend it. It's slow, it's dull, it's boring. There's nothing here, there's no substance, and it's an in-joke that we're out of. I don't understand it. If they added a little context maybe, or added some kind of substance to Ralph being a doofus, then maybe it'd be funny. As it is though, Fire Dogs 2 is a real tragic case. It had a lot of potential, but just couldn't live up. Fire Dogs 2 is also hurt by the fact that it is a sequel to one of the most beloved episodes of the original Ren and Stimpy show. John Kay said that Fire Dogs 1 was written in an afternoon, and I believe it. It's not really polished, but it is certainly a great episode. A real standout. It's simple, but funny and effective. It doesn't help that they aired this one right back to back with Fire Dogs 2. Yeah, so Fire Dogs 2, upon its original airing, was split in half. They aired the first Fire Dogs episode segment, then the first half of Fire Dogs 2, which, to show you how much it drags, the first half only consists of them going to the apartment. That's really it. Then they aired this weird live-action Honeymooners parody, and then the second half of Fire Dogs 2. Luckily on the DVD, they put Fire Dogs all together, although we are missing Fire Dogs 1, which is a shame. This has nothing to do with Fire Dogs at all. This could be an entirely different story where Ren and Stimpy get adopted by a big fat tub of lard who doesn't know how the world works, and then hilarity ensues, or at least is supposed to ensue. Even the fire chief, who's technically speaking a reoccurring character, 
isn't the same fire chief. Yeah, I get it. This was supposed to be an episode in the original Nickelodeon era, and the fire chief himself was actually based off Ralph Bakshi, albeit fairly loosely. Still, this doesn't mean that it's a good sequel. John Kay is capable of making bad ideas even in the 90s, as we now know thanks to Katie Rice and Robin Burke. Fire Dogs 2. Oh, what could have been, what could have been. Now here's where we're gonna take a brief break to talk about the airing of Ren and Stimpy Adult Party Cartoon because this actually has to do a lot with the episode that we just talked about and the episode we're about to talk about. The show didn't get to air all of its episodes. It got canned after three. See, the other Spike TV series, Gary the Rat and Stripperella actually got to air all of their episodes. In fact, Gary the Rat got to have an actual finale, but this did not. People hated, hated this series. Even though it was the most viewed out of all three of the shows, it still did very poorly, and it reviewed even worse. Fans of the original, they despised it. This wasn't Ren and Stimpy. This didn't even have the same writing style. All of it was broken and to them ruined the original. I personally wouldn't go that far because the original's still there and we can enjoy it on its own, but this certainly doesn't help. It's always there. It's always looming. Critics didn't like it either because they felt it was trying too hard to be vulgar, everything was forced, and it dragged. Basically, everything I've been saying. So, after bad reviews and not so great viewership, it got canned. So the remaining episodes actually didn't air in the Americas at all. They only aired overseas in MTV Poland and other such places. They didn't see the light of day until this was released on DVD. Yes, Ren and Stimpy Adult Party Cartoon has a DVD release, and it's one of the most bizarre DVD releases I've ever seen. They don't call it Ren and Stimpy Adult Party Cartoon. They call it The Lost Episodes, featuring Adult Party Cartoon. I guess the show was so toxic that they couldn't call it by its actual name, otherwise people would get scared by it. It didn't work though because this DVD did not sell well at all, that's why it's so rare. The reason for these episodes getting pulled is kind of debated. Some say it's because Spike TV wanted to get Adult Party Cartoon off the air as soon as possible so they didn't want to air these. Some say it's because of the more incendiary content. Some say because the length. It's impossible to say really, especially with John K always muddling up the story every time he's asked. So, I say, doesn't matter. The fact is, these things didn't air. Now let's take a look at them. Naked Beach Frenzy is porn. That's all it is. It's animated porn. I don't like porn. I don't like this. If it had some other substance, maybe it'd be okay. But it's porn. I don't like porn. I don't like this. Next. Now, I want to make one thing very clear. To all people watching this, whether you're young, you're old, whatever you are, listen to me when I say I hate altruists. This is the worst, the absolute worst anything with Ren and Stimpy on it. I know, this is a scalding hot take. Normally the worst episode is said to be either Naked Beach Frenzy or Stimpy's Pregnant. Or, you know, if we're judging by the bandwagon, Ren seeks help. But this physically hurt. It's grueling. It's mind-numbing. It is insufferable to watch. You know why? Well, take a look at that runtime. 40 minutes. And this barely has enough content to be 11 minutes. Let me tell you the entire story. Ren and Stimpy are all of a sudden altruists, and they want to do good things. They find a woman with a headless boy, and they don't have anything because they live in a hole in the ground. Then they go steal from rich people and give them stuff, and they chop down a forest and make them a house, and then the police come by, bust them, but then they say, hey, you did a good thing after all, I'll let you off scot-free. That's it. That's all that happens. 40 minutes can easily be condensed into what? What was that, 20 seconds? This drags more than anything I've ever seen. These things don't stop. Even the non sequiturs they try, like the widow's talking nipples, or Stimpy being an Italian immigrant working on the house. Normally, in other competent shows, this would be about maybe 30 seconds tops, and then never referenced again. Well, the nipples one goes on for quite a while, but let me tell you, that Italian immigrant one what was that, like two minutes, three minutes? Speaking of the jokes dragging, there's one where they show the widow everything that got her, and I swear, this is like three minutes. All it is, is them showing 
some household object, and then some guy whispers the price, and then they look excited. That's not a joke. That's not a joke. That's something happening, but it's not a joke. There's not a joke happening. I don't see any joke. There's no haha. And there's no variation on it either. It's the same thing over and over again. How many times have I had to say this in this review? That it's the same thing over and over again? Are you noticing a pattern? If you thought that was annoying, how about the same joke over and over for three minutes and that's it? If you thought, hey, why'd the chicken cross the road to get to the other side? Huh, you think that's funny? Well, how about I say that again and again for three minutes? Is it gonna get any funnier? No, it's not. It's gonna get more and more insufferable. That's the whole thing with altruists. It doesn't know how to fill its runtime. It goes on forever. I don't care. I don't care that Mr. and Mrs. Pipe have a cameo appearance. They don't get to do anything. I don't care that Daffy Duck gets spoofed in this. It's not really clever, and all it is is slightly disturbing. I don't care that this is supposed to be a Three Stooges reference. They don't do anything with that. All there really is to show that this is a Three Stooges parody is the occasional line delivery, the basic setup of the story, and a slap fight. You could also argue that maybe Stimpy thinking that the house was haunted could also be a Three Stooges parody, but I could also see that fit in the original Ren and Stimpy, so I can't really tell. Altruist also has the infamous sawing scene. What's that? Well, for the uneducated, let me fill you in. Ren ties a giant saw to his crotch, and then saws a log on Stimpy's butt, and it's gay sex. Haha, <laughs> get it? Get it? Huh? Get it? Get it? It's not really funny. I don't even really find it disturbing, I just kind of find it being John K. trying too hard. Yeah, I get it. It's supposed to be incendiary adult content. But once again, the joke goes on too long, it overstays its welcome. And then by that point, anything you would find funny, you're waiting for it to stop. You're looking at your watch saying, oh wow, they're still doing this joke? Great. Woo. Lucky me. That's all altruist is. You could watch this thing on three times speed and get just about as much out of it. Actually, I think that would help. Unfortunately, this is the only one of the original lineup that John K. did not consider for the original Nickelodeon series. This was actually something he created specifically for Adult Party Cartoon. But the concept of Ren and Snippy doing horrible things in the guise of being humanitarians, all while believing that they're being good people, has a lot of potential. In fact, if you cut a lot, and I do mean a lot, of the fat from Altruist, this could be a truly great Ren and Stimpy episode. Maybe even up there with the likes of Stimpy's invention. But no, it tries too hard to be offensive, and tries too hard to be way too long. I mean, look at that runtime. That's inexcusable. I know John K has never been good with runtimes. A lot of the episodes went long. That's the reason why Stimpy's Pregnant and Fire Dogs 2 had to get split up into two parts. He made them too long. But this is inexcusable. Why did he make it so long? I can understand if there was enough content to make it so long. Like, Ren Seeks Help. That has a reason to be as long as it is. Altruist does not. In my opinion, with the script they have now, it would barely justify being 11 minutes. It's so bare bones. You can tell it's the first draft. John K doesn't like to do a lot of proofreading with scripts, but here, it shows. It absolutely shows. You feel every last millisecond drag by as you're begging, pleading with it for something, anything interesting to happen, but it never does. This is one of the worst episodes of anything I've seen ever. I know that's a hot take, and I know a lot of you will not agree, but I found this painful to watch. Absolutely painful. All it is, is standing around with a loud noise here and there, and weird stock sounds, and poor audio mixing, with the occasional off-color joke. But you know what the worst part about this is? Is that the interview for this episode is one of the worst things I've ever seen ever. Why is this so bad? It's just an interview. It's just bonus material. Well, all it is, is these three guys, who are probably high given how much they're laughing and how little they can focus on something, talking about how this episode is so good, and how it really shows that John K is ready to make a movie. Are you kidding me? He can barely make something that's 11 minutes. How can he make a movie? What's he gonna do? Is he gonna stretch everything out, fill it with annoying sound effects? 
Oh, I can see it now! John Chris Lucy's Coraline! Hello? Coraline! <gasps> Wanna hear my new song? My father can't play piano. No need to. This piano plays me. Uh. Uh, uh. Man, this is this is oh. <laughs> it's too late for me now. I know, right? It's gonna be awesome. I'm peeing my pants with excitement already. Ultras, I hate it. I hate it so much. Now, we're finally at the last one. Stimpy's pregnant. I don't like this one either. Nah, no. Everything I could say about Onward and Upward I can say about this. It drags, it's trying too hard to be gross, it's not gross, it's more boring. What else can I say? This one was basically fan service. A lot of the people that wanted to see Ren and Stimpy together and didn't get their fill on Onward and Upward, they would love to see this. Unfortunately, this doesn't have any substance to go along with it. What's the most generic pregnancy joke you can think of? Strange cravings, mood swings, all that stuff? Well, they do it here. And that's it. And they just make it a little grosser. And that's all. There's nothing else to it. It's basic standard pregnancy writing 101. This also has some cruelty elements added into it with Ren being an abusive husband. Technically, it's complicated. So, Ren is on the phone the whole time bragging about how his seed is what impregnated Stimpy, while Stimpy is having to do all the chores. And that's it, there's no real story, again it's a bunch of vignettes. Only unlike Fire Dogs 2, this one thinks it has a story because it tries to have a first, second, and third act. However, none of these feel connected. They all feel super disjointed. Nothing feels like it flows together. And then we get to the birth scene, which is, I'll admit, fairly disturbing. Not funny disturbing, but it is quite disturbing. Only to reveal that Stimpy wasn't pregnant. He was constipated. And then they believe that the crap is actually a baby? Now, why am I confused at this? Well, normally, this would actually be a decent Ren and Stimpy twist. Not funny, but it would make sense for Ren and Stimpy. However, the opening narration, which once again, say it with me, goes on forever, talks about how in this episode, Stimpy's gonna be playing the role of a woman. But that's not really what happens here. Stimpy's still a man. They acknowledge that. It's, it's complicated. Basically, this whole thing doesn't really know what it's trying to be, except disgusting. And even then, it's not really that disgusting, it's more mildly infuriating because it thinks it's disgusting and it's so proud of itself. But really, it's boring. That's all there is to it. It's boring and trying way too hard. And honestly, that's how I describe this whole show. It's boring. It tries way too hard to be in your face, loud, insane. We're the new South Park. But it's not. It's really not. Are there any good things about this show? Yes, there are. The animation, although it is a little bit rough sometimes with the characters' mouths not moving, or like I said in Ren Seek's Help, the backgrounds change with the blink of an eye, it's actually really good. The coloring is nice, the animation is super fluid, and John K's never draw the same face twice style is on full display here. And unlike Cans Without Labels, it's interesting to watch. The voice work is somewhat good, John K is hit and miss as Ren in this. In some episodes, like Ren Seeks Help, he does a good job, while others, like Stimpy is Pregnant, he does not. The problem is, it's very clear that he's forgotten how to do the Ren voice. He's really out of practice. That, combined with the fact that he's trying desperately to be edgy and cool, it seems like he's trying too hard with his delivery. There's a lot more shouting and a lot more screeching here. It's kind of like how Invader Zim entered the Florpus made Zim scream half of his lines because that's how people remembered him talking. It's like that here. It feels a little bit forced. 
Only unlike Enter the Forpus, it doesn't have a good story and other cast members to go along with it. Although, it does have Eric Bauza, who I will admit is a good Stimpy. Billy West, the original voice of Stimpy, refused to take part in Adult Party Cartoon because he said it was so unfunny and would damage his career. So, Eric Bauza, a brand new, up-and-coming, fresh face on the scene, took the role of Stimpy. While he doesn't sound exactly like Billy West, he does his own thing enough and does a decent enough impression. Honestly, I'd say he does a good job. When I was younger and saw this show because I first saw this show when I was 14, I had problems, I guess. I didn't care for it, but you know what? Over time, I've learned to appreciate it. I realized that not everyone can be Billy West. In fact, only really one person can be Billy West, and that's Billy West. But he does a good job. Ralph Bakshi, once again, he was fantastic at this. It's also good to see some other smaller characters like Mr. Horse. He comes back twice, and he's always enjoyable, even if the episode he's in is not. The title cards are also really good too. My only real pet peeve is Fire Dogs 2, which is the same one with the two slapped on it, but that's not really all too bad. Again, Brent seeks help, it's disturbing, but it looks good. Onward and upward, it depicts what the episode's about perfectly, even having the spittoons on the banisters there. Naked Beach Frenzy, it at least looks entertaining. Altruist, it's supposed to be a Three Stooges parody, and honestly, this is probably the closest they ever come to it. Stimpy's pregnant, and okay, I'll give you that one. This one isn't really all that great. But the title cards, they're good. But isn't that bad that one of the best things I can say about the show is the title cards? I'll bet you think we're done here. Well, if you look at the runtime for the video, you can see we've got quite a bit more to talk about. This show damaged Ren and Stimpy beyond repair. This was really, really devastating. See, this show was so hated at Viacom, the owners of Ren and Stimpy became scared to ever do anything Ren and Stimpy related again. The occasional throwback, like say, putting them in Nicktoons MLB, or airing them on Nicktoons Network to see if people were still interested, or putting them on merchandise. That's as far as they'll go. They don't ever want to do another Ren and Stimpy project again. People hated Adult Party Cartoon. They disowned it. They vowed never to re-air it again, and it hasn't re-aired since. The DVDs don't count, folks. This hasn't been on TV since. This thing utterly destroyed Ren and Stimpy's reputation. Gone were the days where people could say that it was a great show that got a little bit wonky when the creator was gone. Now, when the creator was at the helm, able to do whatever the heck he wanted, they saw on full display what they're gonna get. Although, we can't really blame John Kay, right? He was forced into it. It was executive meddling, we can't blame him, only those big, bad corporate suits that try to ruin art. If you believe that excuse, I got some oceanfront property in Arizona to sell you. This cannot be trusted. John Kay, you're really gonna trust his word on this? First of all, every single thing in here is exactly up his alley. All the sex, all the raunch, that's exactly what he wants. Although I do believe that he originally wanted to make Ren and Stimpy as it was, maybe like Man's Best Friend level though, I do believe that part. However, I also believe that every single thing put into all these episodes was exactly him. Why? Well, not only does this fit his style quite well, but in case you don't know, when he was fired off the original Ren and Stimpy, he made up a whole bunch of stories about that too, only for the truth to come out. And he did that here, with Adult Party Cartoon. Why should we trust him here? He's already proven to be a liar with so many things. It's clear here that John Kay had full reign, especially from the episode lengths. Again, the network wasn't able to tell him no. That's why these things go on forever. That's why he was able to get away with first draft writing. And that's why these things did not last. It seems like John Kay's only really good when people know how to tell him no. Similar to George Lucas in the prequels. The reason Star Wars turned out so well was because George Lucas wasn't the only guy on board. He had people to tell him no. He had people telling him, no, you can't make Han Solo Greedo. No, Han Solo has to shoot first. No, Jabba the Hutt can't be a human. Stuff like that. But when the prequels rolled around, people forgot that. Therefore, they made him the only guy in charge. So now we got things like Jar Jar, Watto, 
And these love scenes from Attack of the Clones. The same thing happened to Ren and Stimpy adult party cartoon. John Kay, no matter what he says, was not the only guy that made Ren and Stimpy what it was. You can credit a lot of the good stuff to Bob Camp, who was right there helping John Kay along the way. And hey, look at Games Animation. Even those good episodes in there, they did not have John on board. You can't credit him for any of that. But once again, people didn't remember this. When Spike TV commissioned Adult Party Cartoon to get up and running, they decided to put John Kay at the helm, with no one around him to tell him, hey, maybe making Altruist a 40 minute monstrosity is a really bad idea. We can even see this in the unproduced episodes, because yes, there are some unproduced episodes. Let's go over them, shall we? One of them was George Licker, American, taking Ren and Stimpy out into the woods so that they can become men. This one seemed okay. Not great, not bad, just okay. There's nothing really to talk about with this one. Another one they were gonna do was a remake of an episode where Ren and Stimpy decide to switch roles, where Ren becomes an insufferable idiot and Stimpy becomes an insufferable jerk. This one also seemed okay, but it's been done before. I get wanting to remake it in a how I would have made it style way, after all, I do that on one of my other channels, but doesn't seem good. What little we know about it, what little we've seen, and of course, with Adult Party Cartoon's writing style firmly established, I don't have high hopes for this one, and I'm kind of glad it didn't come out. The most infamous of these is Life Sucks. This one was going to be the prequel to Ren Seek's Help. Remember? I mentioned that earlier. Life Sucks is supposed to be about Stimpy thinking that life is so, so good, but Ren shows him all the cruel things that happen in life. Really? It's Ren talking about horrible atrocities and Stimpy crying along to it. There's no real story. There's no joke here. This is basically what people think Ren Seek's help is. It's nothing but cruelty and disturbing imagery. Even though it isn't finished and it's not really audio mixed. Although to be fair, what stuff that John K makes is audio mixed. There's nothing here. It's simply talking about atrocities that have happened in history. There's no Ren and Stimpy spin on it. There's no cartoonish over-the-top exaggeration. There's nothing to it. It's depressing, yeah. And that's it! Unpleasant and depressing. Is that really what you want out of a Ren and Stimpy episode? Personally, I would say no. So from what I can gather, this was what Ren did to Stimpy in the beginning. This is what made Stimpy go over the edge and Ren seeks help. And this is what made Ren decide, I'm a horrible person and I'm mean to those who are close to me. I better get help from some guy who's not actually a psychiatrist. On the one hand, I do definitely see that. Stimpy is such a happy-go-lucky, carefree creature that when that worldview gets destroyed, he can't cope. He can't deal with it. On the other hand, this sucks. Life sucks. Sucks. To think that they were going to build this as the greatest episode of Ren and Stimpy ever. Trust me, it's not. And to think they also wrote this as an episode of the original show. They thought this was going to be cool for kids. I don't know what they were smoking either. These are the three unproduced episodes of Ren and Stimpy Adult Party Cartoon, right? There's no more. Oh wait, there is one more. Nobody talks about this one. Because not a lot of people know about it. Even Phantom Strider, when he talked about the three unproduced episodes, we didn't know about this one at the time. And I think, had this one been made, this would have been the absolute worst thing with Ren and Stimpy on it. Worse than Altruists. Because of what it implies, and what it stands for. Everyone out there, I introduce you to the Succubus. This is inexcusable. For those who don't know, in 2018, John Chris Felusi was accused of being a pedophile by two women, Robin Bird and Katie Rice. Katie Rice actually worked on Adult Party Cartoon, and you can see her in the Uncomfortable Naked Beach Friends interview. And she does not look happy to be there. Anyways, Robin Bird is the one we'll be focusing on today. She was a big fan of Ren and Stimpy. A huge, huge fan. And she wrote a letter to John saying that she wanted to be an artist and work on a cartoon like he did. So, he flew her over to the studio, showed her around, and then molested her. And then they started getting in a relationship because she was an underage girl and didn't know what she was doing. John Kay has admitted to this, that he had an underage girlfriend. One that he used 
a lot for not good things. Robin realized that she was being abused and got out of there as soon as possible. However, John never stopped thinking about her. He wanted her back. How was he going to get her back? Well, he's got a new show on Spike TV, doesn't he? How about he uses that to manipulate her? This has come from a tweet tweeted by Robin Bird herself, and we have seen firsthand that this has come from Mr. Chris Felusi himself. So, let me show you what he sent to her. She wrote on her tweet, When John K. was planning Ren and Stimpy adult party cartoon and trying to get me to come back and work on it, he sent me some terrible outlines. He is the Wren who downloads dirty pictures. I am the Wren who ran away. Well, what is she talking about? Let's take a look at this outline that John sent her, shall we? The Succubus, a story about John and Robin. What do you think about us writing a cathartic story about some of our crazy adventures together? Maybe we could laugh at ourselves and then be happy together. Or is that too weird? Rough ideas? Ren embodies both John and Robin's worst traits and drives Stimpy to abject misery. Ren and Stimpy live in a luxurious mansion in the Alps. It's full of clocks that tick madly. Ren stays up late at night downloading pictures of the web, cackling hideously. At night, Ren turns into a lamprey and sucks Stimpy's soul out of him little by little. One day, Ren cracks. Ren has a panic attack and decides to leave Stimpy. He hates the Alps and can't take it anymore. Stimpy loses it. He rolls in his litter box crying. He gets up, tears in his eyes, and begs Ren to stay there. Bits of litter all around his lips. It's no use. Ren leaves to go back where he grew up. He has wonderful memories of the most beautiful place on Earth. He goes back to live where he grew up in a bucket of crap. All his friends and family live there. His dad is Robert Ryan and his mom is Peter Lorre. Stimpy wastes away back in the Alps. Of course, they get back together in the end, but not until unendurable trauma takes place. Maybe this could be a movie. We sure could make it intense and highly dramatic. What do you think? We'll make everyone cry. So egregious spelling errors and what's supposed to be a professional proposal aside, this is really unnerving, especially given that we know their relationship now. He was very manipulative and abusive, and this is clearly trying to coax her to not come back to the series, but come back to him in a very creepy way. But if you think that that's all we have, no. But there's more to go off of with this. This is apparently having to deal with Robin and John's breakup. This is what transpires. You can't tempt me with treasures or fame. I want these things no more. But we're best pals, Ren! We're supposed to give gifts and hang out together! I'm not your girlfriend! Take the hurt feelings! Cry if you have to! I don't feel sorry! That doesn't make me Satan! I may be cruel, but I'm more human than you will ever be! But Ren, I'm a cat! Shut up! I'm more of a cat than you will ever be! I have ten lives! <laughs> My own foot mocking me! Away face! Go face! Go! We know what this has to do with their breakup because of the tweet that Robin has attached to this. Dear Lord, I love those dream pets and fled with all of them. Now they're my daughters. And I'm still more of a cat than he'll ever be. Yeah, I think it's kind of obvious what this was about. And also, given the fact that there's some murmurings that Stimpy's Pregnant was inspired by a story that he wrote about him and Robin together, but that's unconfirmed, so I'm not going to hold that against him. Anyways, it's clear to see what was going to happen if this show carried on. He was going to use this to start fetishizing everything and really work out his relationship woes. Is that something you want to see John K. take on, especially knowing what we know about him now? Personally, I say absolutely unequivocally no so that is ren and stimpy adult party cartoon everything about this was broken and wrong it's like it doesn't even understand what the original ren and stimpy was it wasn't crude for the sake of crude it had jokes behind it it had slapstick it had wild takes 
it didn't have constant, loud, annoying sound mixing issues with stock sound effects and grotesque, unappealing visuals. Even when the visuals were grotesque, they were still appealing. This doesn't get it. Not to mention the fact that, once again, it doesn't know what the word pacing means. Though it has a couple small upsides, like Eric Bowser's performance or the nice animation, that's not enough to save this show. It's insufferable. It's horrendous. It breaks the original in half and then grinds those halves to dust. And looking at what we were gonna get had this thing continued and not gotten disowned entirely by the company, well, I can certainly say that I'm glad this thing didn't last long. Sadly, even though it died, and died quickly, it took the legacy of one of the most beloved cartoon duos down along with it. So folks, thank you very much for watching the video. Wow, this is a long one, huh? Probably the longest media mementos I'll ever make. I think I just jinxed myself. Uh, that's not a good thing. Anyways, what do you guys think of the video? What did you think of Ren and Stimpy Adult Party Cartoon? What is your least favorite episode of said Adult Party Cartoon? Comment below and let me know because I'm always excited to hear what you guys have to say. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.